one of these baskets contains a rare and dangerous wild animal. What is your name, please? My name is Richard Weldy. What is your name, please? My name is Richard Weldy. What is your name, please? My name is Richard Weldy. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Richard Weldy and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Good evening and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Brought to you this week by Arid Whirlin, the new roll-on deodorant with First Stop. And now may I introduce our panel. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Bergen. My name is Merv Griffin. My name is Kitty Carlisle. And my name is Hy Gardner. <laughs> Merv, on behalf of all of us, may I say how glad we are that you could be with us tonight? Thank you for inviting me. Appreciate it very Merv much. Merv Griffin, as you probably all know, is a star of his own show called Play Your Hunch. It's on this network five days a week. Well, he's a busy guy, and you get a chance to play your own hunch tonight plenty of time. I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> well, have fun. Now, these three gentlemen, as you heard, all claim to be Richard Weldy. Only one, of course, is the real Richard Weldy. The other two have merely assumed that identity, and they are the ones who do not have to stick to the truth. Now, panel, if you will please follow along with your copies of this affidavit as I read it to you. I, Richard Weldy, am an American citizen now living in South America. During the past 10 years, I have led more than 100 safaris into the jungles of the upper Amazon River. I am considered an expert in South American animals, and many of my expeditions have been for the purpose of capturing live specimens for zoos. I have just returned to the United States with 30,000 tropical fish from the Madre de Dios River for a Florida dealer. I have also taken movie crews into the jungle for location pictures. On a recent trip, I captured a seven-foot rainbow boa constrictor, which I have kept as a pet. I call her Iris. Iris is in this basket. Signed, Richard Weldy. <laughs> all right, panel, you heard these three gentlemen all claim to be Richard Weldy, Amazon hunter. Now, only the real Richard Weldy is required to answer your questions truthfully. Each of you will question as usual until you hear this signal. At the end of the questioning period, you will be asked to cast your vote for the one who, in your opinion, is the real Richard Weldy. We'll begin tonight's questioning with Hi Gardner. Hi. I'm afraid you're going to have to end with me because I've got to disqualify myself, Bud. Why? Well, I, I, don't, I don't know Iris, but uh, I met Dick Weldy in the Broadway jungle, and I know him very well. Oh, did you really? Uh -huh. Well, okay, Hi. It's too bad, but that'll go as one incorrect vote and add that much to the amount they win. <laughs> So that brings us to Polly. <laughs> Polly Bergen. Who is it? <laughs> Where are you looking? Quick. Um, number, um, let's see, number two. Uh, how did you manage to get 30,000 tropical fish back here? Well, I brought them up in uh, polyethylene containers. A poly who? Not Polly Bergen. Polyethylene. There's <laughs> another poly. Uh, Never heard of her. Plastic containers. Oh. What, with, with filled with, with water well, and everything? Yes. Uh -huh. I see. Number three, uh, what is a quadamundi? <laughs> Quadamundi is a very, very sensitive little animal. Long tail, long snout, and very, very uh, unferocious, shall we say. Uh -huh. Number one, uh, there's a, a rather well-known explorer whose first name is Lewis, who has written many books and, uh, about his expeditions in South America. Could you give me his last name? Fawcett. Number two, could you give me uh, Lewis's last name? I'm sorry. He did a lot of exploring on the Amazon. And this is the headhunter. Number three? I'm afraid not. Tell me. Uh, number I suppose I should disqualify myself. I have met Iris, but I haven't met Dick Weldy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how nice for you. <laughs> uh, number one, you brought 30,000 tropical fish back to America. Would you name some of the species you brought back to America? Uh, the corridor, which is... Uh, Catfish, the piace, the angelfish, uh, and many, many other small varieties. Number two, will you name some, please? Well, angelfish, um, <coughs> neons, um, corridors. 
Number three, what do you feed this snake? Well, I haven't fed him in the last four months. That's very interesting. <laughs> do you think he's a little hungry? Well, no, they, uh, in this weather, they hibernate more or less, and they don't eat. Uh, they eat approximately one to two years. Number one, through what country is the, uh, in South America is the upper Amazon flow? Uh, Peru, Colombia, and uh, Ecuador. Mm -hmm. Kitty? Number one, does your boa constrictor travel around with you? Oh, well, constantly. <laughs> uh, well, uh, when you're in hotels, where does he stay? Uh, in the bathtub. <laughs> Ne never leaves a ring around the tub, either. <laughs> Is he asleep now, number one? Uh, I hope so. Uh, you're not sure? Uh, he, he's, uh, he's dormant. Let's put he it is down. dormant. No, he wouldn't be moving? Uh, not obviously, right mm. at the moment. Number two, uh, do snakes really shed their skin? Oh, yes, they do. How do they look when they're half in, half out? That's it. I have to leave them half in and half out. It's time to move. In our consultation panel, will you please mark your ballots? And in so doing, of course, select number one, number two, or number three. The team of challenges, of course, will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. Okay, panel, have you all voted? Everyone through? Okay. Polly, for whom did you vote? Well, I'm pretty sure it's number two, uh, mainly because he was very quiet, and uh, I think that they figured we would think an explorer would, like, you know, speak up and everything, and he's uh, very quiet. He also has a nice tan, which I noticed number three didn't have, and I figure working out with wild animals, he would have. Okay, Merv, what about your... I have to go along with Polly. I picked number two for just about the same reason, <clears throat> because of the tan. He looks like a kind of a guy that could handle a, a snake in a bathtub. <laughs> Who'd want to? Yeah. <laughs> Kitty? Well, I picked number one because I, you always ask what a quarter Monday is, and I never can remember, Polly. <laughs> but I thought that the other fellow's name was Fawcett. Who? The Explorer. And number one said it was Richard Fawcett. You mixed me up on that, too. I'll never forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> but I said his first name was Lewis. <laughs> oh, Lewis. Oh, Lewis. <laughs> Oh, no, we are off. Oh, and yes, of course, you didn't uh, vote at all. No, he disqualified himself. Okay, there we have it now. We've had uh, our votes, and if you're playing along with us at home, which we hope you are, you'll find out now, as we do, how right or wrong you were, as well as we finding out how right or wrong we are. Now, uh, as we discover which one of these gentlemen is the Amazon hunter, I'm going to ask you gentlemen, if you will, please, to each come out and stand in front of your desks with the basket. <laughs> We have no desire to see this snake. You have <laughs> <laughs> Will the real Richard Weldy please take Iris, the boa constrictor, out of his basket? color for this. She is really one of the most beautiful creatures I've ever seen. She's called a rainbow. <laughs> rainbow boa too. constrictor. And she's blue and purple and, and that sort of brick red along the back. And it's just perfectly beautiful. She's lovely. You take her home, buddy. <laughs> Why do you call her Iris? Why? Because, because uh, uh, Arco Iris is a rainbow. Oh. See, that's the reason. Okay, gentlemen, you go back to your seats if you will while we find out about the others of you. Iris? Bless you. Number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you do, please? My name is William Livingston. I'm sales promotion manager for Old Granddad, Old Taylor, and Old Crow, Kentucky Bourbon. That's good to say, buddy. Thank you, sir. And number three, would you tell us about you? I'm Lawrence W. Carr. I'm an airline pilot instructor. It's <laughs> very nice to have you all. And, uh, Iris, we're sorry to have had to nudge you out of your dormant period there, but in any event, checking up, we have one incorrect vote from High from disqualifying himself, two correct and two incorrect. That brings us to a total of, and that means that $250 each, there's $500, gentlemen, from Arad Whirlin, 
Thank you very much. On your way out, there's a year's supply of Rise Instant Shave for each of you, except Iris. We'll figure out something for her. And good night and good luck. Now, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Penny Coolen. What is your name, please? My name is Penny Coolen. What is your name, please? My name is Penny Coolen. All right, panel, here's the next affidavit. I, Penny Coolen, arrived in New York Saturday on my first visit to the United States. My home is in Durban, South Africa, where I work as a secretary. I hold seven different beauty titles, among them the title Miss South Africa. This fall, I went to London. There, on October 13th, in competition with finalists from 20 different nations, I won the title Miss World of 1959. Signed, Penny Coolen. <laughs> all right, panel, you heard these Lovely young misses, all claim to be Penny Coolen, Miss World, 1959. We start this cross-examination with Polly Bergen. Polly? Uh, thank you, Bud. Number one, where were you born? I was born in Holland. In Holland. Um, number two, there is uh, a motion picture actor who is South African. He was born there. Could you tell me who it is? Uh, that would be uh, Dana Winter. Number three... Uh, what is the capital of South Africa? Uh, the capital is Pretoria. Pretoria. Yes. Number two, uh, number one, rather, I'm sorry. There's another town in South Africa that's uh, sort of like a secondary capital. It's almost a capital, too. Could you give me the name of that? Uh, Johannesburg. Number two, could you give me the name of the... That would be Cape Town. Merv Griffin. Uh, number two, who are your runners-up in the Miss World contest? Uh, Miss France and uh, Miss Norway. I see. Number one, what was the first beauty title you ever won? Do you remember? Miss Vimto. Pardon? Miss Vimto. Do I dare ask her what that sure, is? Sure, go ahead. May I ask what... That's a cold drink. It's a cold drink? Yes. Number two, what's Vimto? Uh, Vimto's a hot chocolate. <laughs> Somebody's lying over there, Brad. <laughs> Number three, were you Miss Vimto, too? No, I was Miss Barletta. I thought. Miss what? Miss Barletta. It's like Vimto. Sounds like an Italian restaurant. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Number three, what is Barletta? It's like Vimto. No. <laughs> <laughs> I forget what Vimto is. <laughs> what is Vimto? Hot chocolate. <laughs> Number one, um, how do you, who's the, who is the um, uh, premier of South Africa? Uh, Vavut, Dr. Vavut. Can you spell it? Uh, V-E-R-W-O-E-D. Number two, what is the status of, uh, of, the, of South Africa vis-a-vis -vis the British Empire? Well, it's one of the British Commonwealth Nations. Uh, number three, what are you doing here? Um, I'm private secretary, and um, I also advertise for... Um, I love the Apes. Hi, Gardner. Number three, who are your private secretary to? I'm private secretary to Femme Barkitech. Ah, number uh, one, which uh, stenographic system do you use? I don't use shorthand at all. Well, that'll be just fine. I mean, <laughs> even if you don't take shorthand. That <laughs> uh, number, number two, uh, exactly where in London uh, did you win the contest? Where were you selected? The uh, contest was held at the Lyceum. Uh-huh. Uh, number two, again, does the name Roland Gammon mean anything to you? Right, that's all the time we have, whether it does or not. We'd have to cast our votes now, so will you please mark your ballots without consultation, panel, and select number one, number two, or number three. You all voted? Everyone? Okay, Polly, for whom did you vote this time? Well, I voted for number three uh, because she had a, a tremendous amount of knowledge. Number one didn't know the Cape Town answer. Number two was a very close runner-up for me, but I, I don't know. Number three looked a little more like she might be voted Miss World, though they're all three very lovely. 
Bird? I seem to be playing copycat here tonight. I'm going along. Uh, I can't go. stand these people to peek over well, your shoulder. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Gosh. It's a nice shoulder, Polly. <laughs> I pick her because she always looks like those ladies in the movies. It always comes out of the jungle. You know how pretty they are. And somebody's always saving them. I like her. I think uh, that's, that's the gal we're looking for. Okay. Kitty, what about your vote this time? I voted for number three, not on the basis of beauty, because they're all beautiful, but also on the basis of information. And High Gardener, I noticed you didn't well, disqualify I, yourself this time. I voted for number two. Uh, actually, it didn't make much difference which girl got the vote, because all I know is that the shape of the world in 1959 will be up to the shape of any of these girls. We're going to have a nice 1959. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely said, that was a very, very pretty speech. I think we all like that. Okay, there we have it now. Our votes, the rhymes and reasons why we voted the way we did. Let's find out now how right or wrong we were. As we see which of these equally pretty ladies is the real Miss World of 1959. So will the real Penny Coolen please stand up? <laughs> Why don't you tell us who you really are and what you do, please? My name is Hella Carson. I was born in Berlin, Germany, and I've never been to Africa in my life. <laughs> and number two, what about you? My name is Gretchen Dahm, and I work for the Conover Agency as a model. Well, we thank you, ladies. It's been a great pleasure having you with us. The panel was real smart tonight. We find that it was only one incorrect vote at $250 from Arid Whirlin. But enjoy it. Thanks, and good luck to you. On your way out, there's a gift package of Carter's Fine product for each of you. Good night, and good luck to you. Now let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Gene Conley. What is your name, please? My name is Gene Conley. What is your name, please? My name is Gene Conley. And so to another affidavit panel. I, Gene Conley, am a pitcher for the National League champion Milwaukee Braves. I have been with the team since 1954 and have pitched in two all-star games. This fall, I came east and tried out for one of the top professional teams in the National Basketball Association. I made the squad, was signed to a contract, and am now playing for the famous Boston Celtics. While I did play both baseball and basketball in college, currently I am the only man in the sports world under contract to play both big league baseball and big league basketball at the same time. Signed, Gene Conley. Incidentally, each of our contestants tonight will receive one of our To Tell the Truth games. And if you'd like to play To Tell the Truth any night during the week uh, at home, by all means, you can uh, do so by simply obtaining one of these games uh, at your local toy or department store. Tell the Truth game. All right, you heard these three gentlemen all claiming to be the same fella, Gene Conley, Major League Baseball, and Basketball Star. We start this questioning with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, bud. Number two, what was the score of the last game you played? Uh, the last game was 124 to 104. Was that basketball or baseball? <laughs> that was... <laughs> that could have been baseball. Um, Mighty busy baseball. <laughs> number three, you... Um, I'm a little mixed up, as you can clearly see by the laugh. Um, in... Sorry, uh, with the Braves, you don't... You pitch. Yes, ma'am, that's right. Do they have pitchers in, in basketball? <laughs> Only with water in them. Uh, yeah. uh, what is the difference between basketball and baseball, number one, except for the ball? Usually the score, I believe. Uh, <laughs> number two, when did I you... Gardner. Kitty, how long have you been a sports writer? <laughs> Uh, number number uh, one in uh, in baseball. What did the initials M V P stand for? National Basketball Association. Uh, number two. What did the initials M V P stand for? Uh, most valuable player. Uh, 
Uh -huh. Number number uh, uh, two, uh, this afternoon they announced the most valuable player of the, of the year, National League. You know any, any idea who it is? Well, uh, it could have been Ernie Banks. Uh-huh. Uh, number three, uh, what is a port side flinger? A port side flinger is one that throws left-handed. Uh-huh. Uh, number one, what American leaguer hit uh, two home runs against you in an all-star game? Nobody did. Number two? <laughs> Holly? Uh, number one, how many men on a basketball team? Five. Number two, how many women on a basketball team? None. <laughs> no, on a, on a woman's basketball team? Uh, I would say six. Uh, number three, uh, why are there five and one and six and the other? They feel we need help or what? <laughs> well, I don't know whether it's five on ours and six on yours, but I wish there were six on ours, too. <laughs> oh. We need them this year. You mean six women? <laughs> Well, I'd love to have six women on there, too, yeah. yeah. Number one, uh, who is the manager of the Milwaukee up. Braves? Fred Haney. Number two, um, I pass. Murph? <laughs> I don't know if I'm back. Thanks. <laughs> Number three, why aren't you in uniform? They got it. <laughs> <laughs> question, you get a point of answer. <laughs> Number one, how wide is home plate? Well, it's usually never wide enough for me. <laughs> Number three, how wide is home plate? Same thing with Number me. two, how wide is home plate? Uh, I don't know how wide it is, but it's got round corners, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, what college did you go to? I went to the University of Purdue. Number three, that's all we have time for, I'm sorry to say. And so it's time to vote. So, panel, will you please mark your ballots? And in so doing, of course, you will select, as you did before, number one, number two, or number three. All marked? Everybody? Polly? Whom did you vote this oh, time? Oh, oh, wait a minute, 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 the kind of hair that I always see those baseball players look like. <laughs> and the abs when they're shaving, you know? <laughs> and also, uh, on the other two, it was two and three, and it only left number one for this one, so a woman told me that they go in that order on this show, so I thought I'd try it. <laughs> Merv Griffin, what about your hunt? I voted for number two. He uh, looks like he could both be a baseball player, and he's got the height for a basketball player. Okay, Kitty? Well, I voted for number one. He looks schizoid enough to be basketball and baseball, and also, he looks as though he might be an athlete. Huh? And I got Well, I voted for number two, uh, unless number two was throwing, throwing me a curb. Uh, mm. He uh, knew Ernie Banks, uh, won the MVP thing this afternoon, and uh, so he got my vote. Okay, there you have it. Now, let's see how we made out. We're about to discover which one of these three gentlemen is the real Major League Baseball and Basketball star. <laughs> so, what'd you say, Polly? <laughs> Bound to be number three. I'll kill that woman who gave me that name. <laughs> All right, here we go. Will the real Gene Conley please stand up? Party hard. Oh. Thank you very much. Number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you do, please? My name is Captain Eldon Jonke. I'm an instructor at the United States Military Academy, West Point, New York. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty says you're not schizoid at all. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Number three, what about you, sir? My name is uh, Albans, and I am a graduate student at uh, New York University. Thank you, gentlemen. Checking up on the score, we find that there were two incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $500 from Arid Whirlin. Thanks very much. And on your way out, there is a year's supply of Rise Instant uh, Shave for each of you. Hope you had fun. We did. Good night and best of luck to you all. And our time is gone for another evening. Goes too fast, I think. Uh, Merv, both nice to have had you with us. You have Thank fun? you, but I enjoyed it. I loved it. How many times did you strictly play your hunch tonight? Uh, oh, oh, I mean, play my hunch every time, every time. <laughs> Strictly that and nothing more. We'll come back again. It's Thank early you. next week. Jackie Cooper will be back with us. 
I guess that's all in the vital statistics department panel, so good night. Good night, good night Bud. Bud. Now, this is Bud Collier saying good night from Arid Whirlin and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. To tell the truth is the Mark Goodson Bill Cotton production. In association with the CBS Television Network. Miss Bergen Gow by Wilmot.